Yo, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> I think it is at least. <laughs> I think so too. Um, so, uh, happy, what is it, Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. Merry Tuesday. Oh. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, what are we talking about today? Um, yeah, like passion. Uh, I heard somebody say the other day, and it really, what's up, Stanley? You're always tuning in, man. I appreciate all the support. Um, I heard somebody say the other day that uh, passion is truth expressed in, in like the physical world. And I was like, man, I feel the shit out of that. I really do. Um, it's like you can see when somebody has passion. It's not a deniable thing. It's not a debatable thing even. Like I've never seen somebody that was passionate about something that I was like, man, he's kind of lukewarm in it. Like you see it and you're like, man, that motherfucker's in this shit. Like they in it. Um, and uh, – uh, again, I was listening to some, some Billy Allsbrook's stuff, and he's another one. He's probably one of my top, if not the top right now, at least in my book, um, of like motivational speakers or just speakers in general, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he was talking about Beethoven. It was some stuff I already knew about, but it was just the way he worded it, man. Like, it kicked me right in the fucking teeth. Um, and, he, you know, the, the Beethoven was so passionate that after he went deaf at the height of his career, like literally like he'd already been composing for decades at this point in time. So like, it'd be like me going blind. Like, I need you to understand how powerful of a, of a metaphor that was for me. Like I was like, Holy shit, you know? And he would take and like bite pencils and like set it on the edge of the piano and just smash the keys or he'd put his face on, on the side of the piano and just smash them so fucking hard that he would like snap fucking strings and, break parts of the piano just so he could hear and feel that music like inside of himself and um like I've heard that before but it never impacted me the way it did this time like I was like crying about it like I'm even juicy eyed now talking about it because I was like holy shit man like what what a level of just love for something and he composed Moonlight Sonata fully fucking deaf like let me say that again because I don't think that when you're hearing that the first time that you're really uh, appreciating. He composed Moonlight Sonata fucking deaf. And that song has, since I was a kid, been so haunting for me. Like, it's something I always fucking love. Like, I used to listen to it when I was, like, a teenager. And I used to listen to rap and fucking metal and punk rock and all these angry, loud types of music. And people would be like, what the fuck is this, man? Like, you have some classical music, like, dead ass in the middle of the rest of the shit? And I did. Um... But it's just like, it's undeniable when you look at something, when you look at evidence of that sort, most people would give up, man. Most people would give the fuck up. There's like, I'm sitting here tattooing my homie Richard here and he's, uh, he's actually, you know, an amputee. Um, and I bet you that you would probably fucking identify with this man, but like, there's like that legless skateboarder dog. Have you seen this guy? Yeah. He's like fucking signed. Like, <laughs> What the hell do you call it? Like, he's like sponsored by a skate deck company to skateboard and he has no fucking legs. Mm -hmm. Like, holy shit. But that is like so damn inspiring to me, man, because it's like people who you think would have every reason to be like, fuck, man, I can't do this no more. I can't. I can't. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, that's like life handing you an out. You know, you go deaf, but you're a composer. Life's like, dog, you don't got to worry about that no more. You already composed a bunch of stuff. It's all good. Don't worry about it. But when that's like just that truth that you have to express is inside of you so thoroughly that the idea of not doing it would be like not breathing ever again in your life. Um, you know, I think that metaphor stands for itself. And uh, I catch myself like sitting and thinking about stuff like this like all the time, man. Like, you know... Do I, do I, am I doing enough? Am I really like where it's at? Like, am I like, you know, living up to these expectations I have for myself? Cause they're fucking unrealistically high probably to be honest, but, um, they are what they are, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, the answer that keeps coming back to me over and over again is that like, there's no such thing as enough. There's such thing as not enough. But what my heart, my soul, my conscience calls me to do isn't, isn't fucking deniable. Like, I can't just wake up one day and say, you know what, heart? I don't need to make art like that, dog. It's not how it works. I don't really need to. You know, I just don't feel like it today. Like, when I have it come over me, like, and I know that, you know, if you ask Lacey or anybody that's close to me, like, that it's like, I'm like a fucking man possessed when it comes to creating shit. Like, 
that like I'm almost probably hard to be around sometimes because it's such a huge focus for me. It's like such a massive passion. I'm sure that I fucking ignore people. I know that I interrupt them because I'm fucking constantly trying to talk over you about how excited I am about being alive, you know? But um, especially like art, man, like I'm making some stuff right now and this is a really abstract design. It doesn't have like a greater meaning to it, but it just speaks to my fucking heart to just make something for the sake of making something. Like, it's not about, like, this has to have some crazy deeper meaning. It's like, I just want when somebody sees this to say, damn, man, that guy clearly loved doing that tattoo. Like, every aspect of that, like, he just really fucking poured his heart into fucking making it look cool and feel right and have, you know, all these elements in it that are, you know, eye-catching and really, like, demonstrates this, just this love for art. And, um... To me, like, that's enough, man. Like, I don't need to have some... I mean, it's cool to be able to do really deep, meaningful pieces. So don't get me wrong. But it's, like... It's also, like... <laughs> sometimes I, I forget that just the act of creation in and of itself is, like, a really beautiful thing. And I think since we're made in our creator's image that when we're not in the act of creating something, be it our life, be it our business, be it our body, be it something that matters to us, that we're in pain the whole rest of the time. That's why they say like artists are like tortured because I think that, you know, me and most of the other visual artists, especially, or, you know, musicians that you'll ever meet could probably attest to the fact that when we're not creating shit, we're some of the most neurotic and fucking psycho people you'll ever meet. And I think it's because we discovered that there's a fucking pathway to get all of this wild emotion that some of us and most of us honestly don't know how to process. Like I'd say that, let's be honest, like ask yourself, most of the emotions you have day to day, do you really understand them or do you just have them? And it's just like, what the fuck do I do with this? Well, it's like working out, man. Once I discovered that working out was this like incredibly potent way to change my mood, I never want to stop doing it. There's days I wake up where I fucking talk myself out of it. You know what I mean? That is what it is. But the whole rest of the day, I feel it. Like I feel it like that I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I felt that I didn't take that little mind hack and create something that, that matters to me, my body. It's like, I mean, honestly, despite the fact that, you know, art and everything else is so important to me, my body is what's keeping me here from day to day alive and fucking experiencing this world and, and, and being able to have impactful and, and, and amazing experiences with other humans. And if I don't take care of it, man, my body and my soul knows it. We feel it. I fucking get angry. You know, I, uh, and I think that the more I've learned that there's all these little tools, the more that my brain can no, no longer deny that I have to do it. Have you ever noticed that some of the most angry, hateful, resentful people in the world are people that aren't making anything? Like really, like ask yourself, like all those trolls on the internet, those, those haters, quote unquote, the people that follow somebody just so they can hate them, the people that always have some shitty opinion about what somebody else is doing but never have anything else they're creating, um... I wonder why that is. And I mean, I don't wonder. I know. I just ask because I want you to think about it a little bit. But um, for real, those people aren't engaged in the act of creation <clears throat> of something that matters to them. And due to that, they're experiencing pain. They're experiencing their unbridled emotions with no type of filter to them. And I think that art filters that fucking feeling out for us. It Art's a great way to do it. Like when you see something that's just like, Abstract art's a perfect example of this. When you see some art that somebody just poured their fucking emotion into, and I'm not talking about just like them poor paintings or something like that. Those are interesting to look at. I'm talking about like maybe there's just like a canvas and it's like mostly black and there's like this crazy just bright reddish yellow stripe that looks like it's on fire straight through the middle of it or straight across, you know, corner to corner. And like when you see it, you just literally like you like, damn. I have an emotional response to an abstract image right now. Like I feel the passion or the anger or the, maybe the, the fury or just the total, you know, want to get that out of them in that paint stroke in and of itself. And we fucking miss that shit guys. What if instead of arguing with one another about how much better our idea was, we decided that we were going to compromise and make something fucking incredible for all of us? You know, there's this deep seated desire, I think, in every visual artist and every auto, you know, in every type of real you know, artistic field to want to have something that lasts longer than you do.
And I realized that in modern times, it's going to be hard to make that really fucking happen. Like when you're, when you compare like Da Vinci and all that shit, man, that stuff's going to be the greats for, for all time, man. Caravaggio, all time. But it's because they were so rare back then, man. There's literally, the reality is, is that there's at least two or three million other artists of my caliber, probably just in the United States alone, at least. All right. And what I have to do is recognize that it's no longer about whether or not my art gets read by somebody. It's about the long-term impact that has on my life and the people around me. Because if I carry a slight impact and change somebody's life in a profound way and they carry that and just change somebody else's life in a slightly profound way, although it waters it down as it goes from person to person, it still has a cascade effect across essentially the entirety of all of us, man. And... I personally would love to see more of us just engaged in creation of some kind. You know, less time spent figuring out what we think somebody else could be doing better and more time making something that matters to us. I know all the time that I spent hating on people on the internet didn't do shit for me. I know all these times that, you know, people sit here hating on one another. And what, maybe your gift is for fucking writing law. Just an example. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. But, like, that's just what gets you going, man. Like, maybe now is your perfect time to start stepping in while everybody's so emotionally charged about everything with, like, Kyle Rittenhouse and are so emotionally charged about all these fucking things that are happening with our, our justice system or with, you know, COVID or all this stuff. Maybe not, now is your time to shine. Maybe now is the time to stop having a conjecture about how we should do something and start actually doing some stuff for it. Because I'm just a tattoo artist, man. I don't have any of the answers. <laughs> I just have my answers, and they worked for me, and I hope they work for you, too. Um, but making these videos is another example of creation, man. Like, if I'm not engaged in some level of creation, getting into flow state consistently throughout my day, the rest, the rest of my day is spent in anxiety, fear, depression, worry, selfish emotions of all kinds, pretty much. Um... And I've realized that I just have to do these things. Like, if I don't, like, I'd rather do it while I'm sitting here tattooing and have a conversation with, with people in a very candid way, you know. The way I talk to my clients is, honestly, you know, I feel like my, my people that get tattooed by me are pretty much my family. I mean, we're having this profound experience, despite the fact that it's like, you know, it's everyday thing for me. It's still profound to this day, like... You know, somebody's trusting me enough to fucking change the way they look. And they're trusting me enough to let me express myself on them. You know, and I, uh, I wish more people would take the time to consider out what a powerful connection that is, man. You know, I don't like that wham, bam, thank you, man kind of fucking style of tattooing. I'm not saying that it's not got its place, that it's not a business, but I want to create something that lasts past me and I want to create a mentality and a, and a type of family here with the people that work for me that lasts past what I do and, and, and starts to bleed over into every aspect of all the people that are around it because I mean what else do I have to do man like what am I going to do make all the fucking money in the world put up my ears and set it on fire and go nah like I thought <laughs> money is no object it's not going to solve any of our problems I know lots of rich people that have all the resources in the world and they fucking hate their lives. I know lots of poor people that have no resources and they hate their lives just as much too. But I know people from both walks of life that absolutely fucking love their lives and I think every one of those people I know that are doing that recognize that they're in charge of their emotions and they're in charge of their day-to-day -day expression of themselves. And the thing is, I'm not telling you you have to be an artist like that. I need you to get that, get that like, out of the way. This isn't about drawing or music or whatever the shit I'm asking what sets you on fire on a passion level like when you see somebody else do it and you could just watch it for hours or when you do it you you forget that time is even passing until you look up and six hours are gone and you're like holy fucking shit how did that happen and those are the things that you need to start right now at doing all the time and you need to start sharing it with people for some people that's video games man I mean serious like look at this they used to say when I was young that, that fucking playing video games was never going to mean shit. Right, man? Like, you know? Yeah. And now there's like fucking literal like, there's like <laughs> tournaments, the, the e-sports. It's even called e-fucking-sports. And it's like a billion dollar fucking, 
business now. And it's all just because some people who were passionate about some shit came together and like, let's make this fucking happen. And I just want more than anything for people to connect with other people. And you're not going to connect with everybody, but everybody recognizes passion. Everybody recognizes it when somebody is just bleeding for what they fucking care about. You know, a lot of people talk about what great parents they are on social media, for example, but how many people do you know they're really on fire about it? They go past just, you know, keeping their kid alive and paying the bills. What type of information are you giving them? Fuck the toys. What kind of truth are you giving your kids? I'm going to let that one hang in the air for a bit, for real. Because... You know, despite my parents' best efforts, or my grandparents, I guess, you know, there's a lot of things I fucking didn't learn, man. You know, a lot of it was because I was hard-headed. A lot of it was because they didn't know either. And uh, when we don't discover who we are and create that every day, we pass on this generational trauma without even realizing it. Did you know that you can pass on negative effects, negative habits and behaviors that you have to your own children, whom we love so much, that they didn't go through the trauma that you went through to gain that habit? But you pass it on to them because guess what? Kids don't ever fail to emulate, but they will always fail to listen. They're definitely going to not listen to you a lot. But weirdly enough, have you ever noticed that people behave like their parents? How many times have I been sitting there sometimes going, man, that sounds like it just came out of my fucking mom's mouth. What the fuck? Wonder where I got it from. Hi, Ma. Love you. <laughs> but... We have to ask ourselves, man, like, what the fuck is truth to me? What? And I'm not talking about this weird subjective, objective truth kind of stuff that we're talking about. Like, what are you truly passionate about? What the fuck matters to you more than anything in this world? And then what's the next thing? You know, I'm 37 years old, man. So if you're young, I invite you to fucking discover these things about yourself now. What do you like? What don't you like? What's hard for you? Chase the shit that's fucking hard, man. Chase the shit that scares the fucking bejesus out of you. Make goals that are so big your family starts trying to fucking tell you to be realistic so you can tell them to fuck off. You know, with love, all due respect, fuck off. I don't know, man, that's a pretty lofty goal. Well, what are you doing with your life again, man? Oh, okay, cool, you work retail? I mean, no, no offense, but I, eh, I'm gonna go ahead and take my own advice on that one, you know? <laughs> What's up, Brian? What's up, Jeremy? Oh, by the way, Jeremy, I actually found your little thank you card, bro. It was actually out in the parking lot. I did get rained on, but I saved it aside and dried it out for you. I do have it here for you. Um, but I mean, like you see that in school all the time. I bet, huh, man? Like where it's just like you can see the people that are really passionate about their fucking... Yeah. We were even talking about that, actually. Right. Like people that are like passionate about their calling and what they're going to school for and people that just... You know, their parents think they should do that, and so they're doing it and, like, putting themselves in debt, right. doing shit they don't want to do, and they're going to have a midlife crisis and, like, maybe even a quarter-life crisis, you know? Right. Because they're not, like, able to say, like, hey, fuck, man, I actually love this. You can't put the sustained effort forward to be successful at anything unless you have fucking passion for it. you like, you know, entrepreneurs and, and people like that are fucking successful at it because they have sustained, passionate effort for business. It's not a deniable thing. I fucking love business. It's, I, I love it, man. It's like, literally to me, it's almost more exciting than art because it's like creating something that I can create art with. Weird, but real. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I feel like we're, we're fucking all drowning and just desperate for something to fucking give meaning to our lives. And I have good and bad news for you. Good news. I get good news, bad news, and then more good news. Let's put it that way. Good news is, it's right there. Where you already know what you're passionate about. I don't have to fucking convince you what you love. <laughs> bad news is, you're going to have to give yourself permission to chase that. And that's a hard thing to do, because usually that means you've internalized some shit that's fucking really toxic or unhelpful, and it's not through anybody else's fault. You just did. You know, it is what it is. The even better news about that, though, is that once you figure out that you're the only one that needs to give you permission, it becomes a very easy process. Like, you know, like, can I make that happen? Fuck, I don't know, man. Shit, I made everything else happen. Fuck it. I'm going to try. 
Maybe I'll fail, but I'll try again, and I'll try again, and I'll keep failing until I get there. And that's really the reality of passion is that you'll fail your way to success before you'll ever fucking succeed your way to success. You will fail so many fucking times you can't count it. Edison failed fucking, what, a thousand times to create the incandescent light bulb. Nobody talks about how many times he fucked it up other than to say, what a bad motherfucker for keeping on going on after he failed 999 fucking times. Can you imagine failing 999 times or something and being like, fuck it, try it again, fuck it, try it again, fuck it, try it again. Nobody does that kind of shit. Because we want instant, instant results. And if we don't, I mean, I guess we see, you know, the fruits of that fucking whole concept and mindset constantly. If I'm not immediately good at it, I won't play. I'm going to take my ball and go home because I can't win all the time. So, yeah. What do you love? I'm going to stop fucking around about it. Starting to hurt pretty good? Huh. Starting to hurt pretty good? A little bit. So, yeah. I got some of this new stuff called holy water. <laughs> That's funny. Holy water, huh? Later, guys. I'm going to spray him down and get this taken care of. <laughs> love y'all. Go chase that shit.